Dad. Got something a little bit different for you today. Been doing just a little bit of work getting the, getting the midget finished up here, doing some upholstery work and just trying to get the last little things before I tackle the seats. Uh, but my buddy Nick has from the UK, he's retired and He's planning on returning to the UK, actually, within a year or so. Uh, I'll be gone for half of that. He'll be gone for another part of it. So we actually don't have that much time left to overlap. And he's my motor guy. So what I decided to do was accelerate out of order what my original plan was. So yesterday we wheeled out this motor, took it out, uh, disassembled everything. Got it down to the bare block. Uh, you know, it all came apart actually pretty nicely. Just degreasing some of the parts. There's the head. Uh, looks a little rough, but um, overall, everything looked okay. It was very, very greasy and grimy. And the lots we have original bearings actually on the, the mains are original. The, um, uh, the wrist pins or, or the wrist uh, piston uh, uh, bearings are also original sized. Uh, so nothing is over. The crank looks good. We measured it. It's worn a little, but 10 thou grind should sort of take care of it. So I'm feeling pretty good about this motor. This is a pretty early motor. Uh, it's actually earlier than my, than my car by a bit. I uh, can't see it here. It's too covered with with grime, uh, looks like it's an early, it's a 54 or so uh, uh, motor, so all that's good. So today's goal is to just degrease as much as I can. I have buckets and full of bagged and tagged uh, fasteners, and I'll have to take those all apart. One of the things that you might not appreciate you appreciate with these one this particular these triumph motors Here's was this was the only stuck one we had and these this this was the valves were open and who knows how many decades it rusted could never free that sleeves came out easily three of the pistons came out easily the crank and my um camshaft are still at nick's he's going to do some final measurements on those uh, before we order up some new bearings. But my job in the next little while is to go through all these bags and clean all these fasteners, wire wheel, everything, get it all cleaned out. And we'll have to take it to the machine shop at some point, disassemble the head. He's got a spring, he's got a spring compressor back here that he lent me. So all in all, I got my work cut out for me. I am slowly sorting out space issues and so uh, I will eventually get back to, to that fender, my nemesis, uh, but I will get it and uh, then we'll be moving forward on, on the rest of the, of, the, of the triumphs. But for now, it's motor time and that will get me to a place where I can at least store that and then after that we'll go on and move on to the transmission and the, uh, the rear end differential. Uh, we'll do a few measurements on there. It's re I've cleaned it and reassembled it. Um, he's going to do some measurements on that just to make sure everything is lining up okay. So anyways, hope you're doing okay. And uh, But I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on something totally different here. There's a million videos out there on disassembling TR3 and 4 motors, so I certainly didn't want to do that. But in any case, here you go. One last picture. Thought you might enjoy this, Dad. This is just the engine block, of course. You can see here, written lightly in red over black, is TR3. This is something that they put on at the factory when they were coming. These were coming off the assembly line. Just somebody with a paintbrush put in the TR3 in red, and just sort of indicating that that's where it was destined for, the TR3. So, still there. And I'll probably try to reproduce it when I can, uh, when I'm pay after I've painted the block. 
just for fun. Howdy, Dad. And this one stubborn piston that wouldn't separate from the sleeve, so I ended up having to cut it because I need to get that connecting rod out of there. And you can just see it was just absolutely fused to that. Morning, Dad. Hope you're doing okay. Thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on what I've been up to. I haven't gotten much accomplished here other than cleaning, so I told you last <clears throat> last weekend we took out, took apart the, I guess it was two weekends ago now, took apart the um, TR3 engine, brought it down to bits, so I've just been spending my time cleaning bit, cleaning parts, timing chain and sprockets, timing chain I think it may be problematic, the sprockets, both look like they're in perfect shape. They were quite dirty, but I think the engine suffered a timing chain uh, tensioner malfunction, among other things. Uh, so the chain will go, but that looks fine. And I've got, you know, bags and bags and bags of cleaned and wire wheeled fasteners. So that all, that's a lot of work right there in the box. Over here today, I've been working on, this morning I've been working on the original uh, water spigot off the side of the block. I managed to just get that apart. It actually works just fine. Yeah, the spring here is a little rusty, but all the pieces are coming out. I picked myself up a, um, a um, ultrasonic cleaner, so I'll pull some of the, pull that out today. Run some of these these uh, valves through there and clean them up some. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure pretty sure I'm going to be able to get that one back. The bore here of this looks nice. There's no there's no uh, streaks through there, so that um, it looks like it's machined pretty well still. This spring probably won't survive, but that's it's pretty rusty. But we'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, clean up. I have the distributor to clean up. It looks it looks just fine. Uh, now I've been working a little bit on the, on the uh, cooling system. Uh, this finally is starting to clean up okay. I was having trouble with the uh, fitting in here with the, for the for the temperature temperature gauge, and you can see there's just still a little bit of crud inside there. But I just wire wheeled through that and let it soak in vinegar for a little bit to help dissolve some of that hardness and. It's coming out better. I need. A, I don't have a tap that's just quite right for that, so I'm just gonna try to clean it for now. But mostly, just little things are left. Um, today, today I'm going to dig into the fuel pump and take that apart and um, get it cleaned. I don't have a kit quite yet, but um, need to get it ready and clean so that when the kit does come in, that's ready to go. Uh, let's see what else I got here that on my head. I'm gonna press out these guides today. Um, everything looks fine. Uh, should should come out okay. They're in the dish. They're all they're quite worn. So we'll put in some press out these guides. Get some new ones. Here's uh, you know I haven't done any any uh, sandblasting or painting or anything like that yet. So the front plates kind of rusty. I have a spare there. I have several spares, in fact, and I will take a look at those. Uh, here's the snub nose on the, on the fret crank, and that's now been degreased, and so it's kind of a little rusty, and so I'm going to put take out the sandblast cabinet and get after that. So, just still, I haven't really, not really doing any Thing, making forward progress yet uh, on the engine block still at the at the um, at the machine shop and so and the crank is off getting be being ground had some marring on one of the main surfaces and so we can't order bearings until we know how much how much he's going to take off to um, to get that to a nice smooth place so yeah so it'll be more of the same here's my timing chain cover and Distributor cover, you can, or, or uh, alt generator bracket. 
So that's gonna all go into the blast cabinet and that will come out from storage there and get some work done. And then in the next week or two, do some painting and et cetera, et cetera. So, so not too much exciting. Uh, I don't think you wanna see me wire wheel fasteners over and over and over again. So I think I'll keep it at that. But after my fuel pump is done, then my next thing will be to go on to carburetors and I have multiple carburetors. I have um, three and a half sets of carburetors. So I'm gonna go through here, decide which ones make uh, the most sense to start with. I'll feel free to cannibalize as I will, just to try to get one best set. I got a rebuild kit here from Joe Curto. And so that's ready to roll. My good friend Nick is a machinist, so we're gonna ream them out and put in new bushings, uh, or ream out the bushings to put in new spindles. And so he's done that several times to good effect. So uh, I think we're gonna be in good shape, but I'm not gonna leave, take these out here until I've sort of cleaned up this mess in such a way that I feel like I can work on something on one thing and get it done right. So this is just some parts that I collected over the weekend, two weekends ago. Uh, there was an old gentleman in Wilmington, North Carolina, who was getting rid of his lifetime supply of TR3 and mostly TR4 parts. And so Nick and I went down there and some of these things are not so helpful, but we, we helped him clean out his garage, so and got a few uh, little bits here and there that were helpful to us, so. All right, Dad, here's the mechanical fuel pump off there. You can see it's pretty nasty. Take it apart, put it in my new, my new uh, ultrasonic cleaner. <clears throat> I've got some, some of this um, carburetor ultrasonic cleaner and soapy stuff. See how it works. And this is just 20 minutes in, in um, the ultrasonic cleaner. This chain, I soak this chain in, in uh, minerals or in um, kerosene overnight and did a light scrub on it. And even after that, you know, that's what the, the solution comes out of. So like, this stuff seems to work pretty well. So I'm not going to use this chain, but. Uh, I just wanted to use do a test here, test run, and uh, sure seems to work pretty well. So I'm gonna keep on going. And, oh yeah, start taking apart this this fuel pump and uh, all that orange stuff. All that was in the bowl and inside here, and I don't think it's supposed to have a poor rusty orange stuff out of the bowl when you pour it when you take it off. <laughs> Anyways, that's part of what I'm gonna work on here today and use my cleaner for. Okay, that's what, a little bit of, not much elbow grease, mostly done by the, the sonicator. Um, so that was just, I, I watched them, let them sit for a few minutes in, a, in uh, vinegar and that helped break up some of the hard, hard deposits that came out of corrosion of that the pot of that metal and uh, that cleaned up okay. And then I just used this, uh, this um, ultrasonic cleaning solution. You dilute that one to five and it starts off this nice clear color green and, and then it turns to, gets darker and darker as it starts to pull stuff up. All right, so that's all ready to go. Wait for the rebuild kit and uh, I'll call that a job. 90% done. Okay, Dad, I think I'm going to end the week here. I uh, did a little work on the head this morning. I pressed out, pressed out the guides. They came out not too bad, not too hard. Needed the press for it. My arbor press didn't, didn't uh, cut the mustard. <clears throat> so I started working on one half of it here. As you can see, it's been it's really quite rusty down in there and so I got this half going and that's 
Got some plenty more work to do, but that was just sort of my first first pass. Try to get it all cleaned out. So got some galleys to open up and clean out and all that good stuff. So I uh, just thought I would show you something again different. And um, I hope that you have a good couple weeks here. I uh, will send this along to you and I uh, wish you... You and Mom the best. I will talk to you later this afternoon. Uh, it's about one or one or so in the afternoon on Sunday. And I'm going to kind of shut down for the day here. So hope you're doing all right. Just a little bit new stuff for you today. Take care now.